Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gruff Talk, where each week we take a deep dive into all the ways we can feel better, look better, live better, and age better. If you have questions or ideas for future episodes, email me at grufftalkpodcast at gmail.com, or you can reach out on social media. We'd really love to hear from you. Today, we're taking a very deep dive into cannabis. You know, weed, pot, brass, Mary Jane, marijuana, whatever you want to call it, with one of the country's leading authorities on how to use CBD to feel better and age better. I'm your host, Barbara Hannah Grufferman. CBD, which is found in cannabis and hemp plants, has been gaining in popularity for its many reported health benefits. Lots of people find that CBD helps manage pain, inflammation, anxiety, depression, insomnia, inflammatory bowel disease, migraines, neurodegenerative disorders, and much, much more. My guest today will answer some of the most common questions, bust a few myths, and help you decide if CBD might be the right choice for you. Janice Newell Bissex is a holistic cannabis practitioner, registered dietitian, nutritionist, cookbook author, and she advises clients on access, proper cannabinoid ratios, dosing, best consumption methods, potential drug interactions, and cooking with cannabis at her firm, Janibis Wellness. She also sells organically grown phytocannabinoid rich hemp, I hope I said that right, CBD products for her clients under her Janibis Wellness label. She's a past recipient of the Media Excellence Award from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Janice has written five books, including The Simple Guide to CBD, Fact, Fiction, and a Path Forward, which I highly recommend. Some of the topics we'll cover are highlighting conditions that may be relieved by CBD, how to choose the right product for you, effective dosing, potential drug interactions, and side effects, which uh, as it turns out, there are very, very few. So lots to talk about. Let's get going. Hello, Janice, and welcome to Gruff Talk. Robert, it is great to be with you. All right. This is going to be a really fun conversation. And I think that everyone listening in will learn a great deal about CBD, what it is, what it can do for you, when you should take it, maybe when you shouldn't take it. But before we start all of that, I really, sometimes I like to ask my guests this question. What did you have for breakfast today? (laughs) I always start my morning with a cup of tea. So I have a cup of tea and I do my Wordle and check my email. Oh, me too. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And then I have my breakfast, which is typically cereal with high fiber cereal with a bunch of walnuts and a half a banana and a glass of juice. But if I'm doing yoga, if I'm going to my yoga class, I just have the half a banana with some peanut butter. And then when I come back from yoga, I usually have uh, yogurt with walnuts and high fiber cereal. That is so funny. I mean, I do a similar thing. I break my breakfast up in two because I usually do some kind of either running or some strength training in the morning. So I have coffee, not tea, but I always have the same. And the audience already knows. Okay, everyone, what do I have? That's right. Whole wheat (laughs) toast (laughs) with peanut butter and chia seeds on top. But then part two, after I do whatever exercise I'm doing, I usually have some yogurt with blueberries and walnuts, et cetera, et cetera. So we are just like rocking and rolling (laughs) with these healthy breakfasts. Oh yeah. Okay. So, you know, we got a lot of questions from the audience, which I'm really happy about. They emailed me. Some of them left questions on social media because this is like a really... It's an interesting topic, and it's also a topic I think that a lot of people are confused about, including me, quite frankly. I have a lot of questions. So before, and this is really going to be like a mini masterclass on CBD because we have you, the pro here, kind of guiding us. But before we get started with the masterclass, I really want to know, and I think a lot of people want to know too, how did you get into this field? Like, you know, your background's in nutrition yes. and you've written cookbooks. You had a podcast about cooking, really, really successful, all focusing on healthy eating. What made you pivot to CBD? Well, in 2016, my dad had some pretty severe pain from some spinal fractures and they gave him all the traditional pain medications, right? The oxy and the, and the 
tramadols and all of those things, which made him groggy. He hated these pain meds and mm -hmm. made him so severely constipated that it required a three or four day hospital stay. So I'm a dietitian, but I'm still not going into detail about that. <laughs> Dietitians are used to talking about bowels and I'm not going to go there. So anyway, at the end of this hospital stay, I said to his doctor, isn't there anything else we can do for his pain? And I knew that Massachusetts had just passed a medical cannabis program, which let me tell you, Barbara, I knew nothing about the medical use of cannabis. I used to use air quotes. I would say, haha, medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. Didn't understand it. And so when his doctor said, I think that's a great idea, I thought, I have to do some research. So I did research. And the more I read, the more I thought, what? This has been used medicinally for thousands of years, and it's only been illegal for 80 years. And it wasn't wow. made illegal because of medical or science reasons. It was political. Really, it was, it was awful the way that this, that it was made unavailable. Doctors fought against it, but it was greed, it was politics, and it was racism. So mm. it became illegal. And of course, I grew up in the just say no generation, right? I don't know, maybe you did too, where you, know, Absolutely. you just say no to drugs. This is, your, this is your brain on drugs, the fried egg and the skillet. So I believed it. I said, well, bad, bad, you know, cannabis, marijuana. We called it marijuana then. Now I realize that <laughs> cannabis is actually the appropriate term. Marijuana is actually a, it's a sort of a racist term. So I don't use that anymore. Oh, that's all, you know, that everyone that's in Janice's book, and uh, which we'll talk a little bit about later, but the history of cannabis, it's very, mm -hmm. very interesting. Mm -hmm. it, it sure is. So anyway, I did the research. I said, okay, it's worth a try. My dad was a little hesitant, but I convinced him. He was in severe pain. I have pain. to say, Janice, sorry to interrupt you, but I'm really, really so intrigued that this doctor that you spoke with was so open-minded that exactly. he or she, I don't know, was it the he, it's he. said, yeah, yes. let's do this. Let's try this. And I can tell you that I have had many, many experiences since then with friends whose, whose parents or my mother and the doctors say, oh, no, I don't think that's a good idea because they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Right. They weren't trained in this. I wasn't trained in it in my dietetic internship. So I get it. But I sort of feel like doctors really have to they have to do a little bit of tr education. They have to yeah, look they have at to move the research. outside of their own, you know, bailiwick a yes. little bit and be more open minded to some other options that are out there. But anyway, right. so you Took were talking about your father. Mm -hmm. He was in a lot of pain. We got him a, a vape pen, brought it home. We had lunch with my mom. We He took two puffs on the vape pen, which well, we had to figure out how to put it together. It wasn't as easy as you would think. <laughs> and then he stood up and he said, I'm going to go take an take a nap. He was, you know, 85 years old. And I said, okay. And he stood up and he said, wow. And I said, are you okay? Are you dizzy? He said, I'm not in pain. Oh. So that very moment, I said, I'm leaving my business of 15 years. As you said, I was a cookbook author and taught people how to eat a healthy diet. And I went back to school to learn to be a holistic cannabis practitioner so that I could help other people who have pain and anxiety and insomnia and muscle spasms and osteoporosis, all, all sorts of things, find relief using CBD and sometimes medical cannabis. What is CBD exactly? What is it? It is one of the cannabinoids or compounds in the cannabis and hemp plant. So cannabis and hemp, the plants are very, very closely related. The main difference is that hemp has just 0.3% THC. So THC is the cannabinoid that people are probably more familiar with that can make you high, can make you stoned. Mm -hmm. So hemp has almost no THC, but it has the other good cannabinoids in the plant. So CBD is much higher in hemp. So they extract the CBD molecule, hopefully with all the other compounds of the plant, which I can talk about when I talk about products, different CBD products. So, so CBD, it has anti-inflammatory properties, anti-anxiety. It is uh, neuro, it's good for neurodegenerative diseases. It's neuroprotective. So for things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's, even our government has a patent on CBD as a neuroprotectant and antioxidant. They got that patent in 2003. Really? So they know that cannabinoids are medicine, basically. And yet, 
nationally, this plant is still illegal and it's not accessible to everybody. Nationally, it's legal, correct. Nationally, it's a state right? by state. Mm-hmm. Federally, it is still a Schedule One substance, which means it's federally illegal, mm-hmm. which a lot of universities are a little bit hesitant to do research given that status. So we have to make it legal. We have to remove that status so we can do a lot more clinical trials. We do have a lot of research, don't get me wrong. There is so much research out there done in this country and around the world showing the potential of this plant for CBD and other cannabinoids in the plant. Mm -hmm. So we just have to do more research so that doctors, you know, we can show doctors, okay, look at here's another new trial that shows, you know, your patients, you deal with, with Alzheimer's patients, look at how it decreases agitation. Look at mm-hmm. how it calms them. Look how it decreases those tau tangles and the amyloid plaques in the brain when you give cannabinoid therapy. So that's, that's a little bit about, so CBD, a compound in the plant that has lots of potential benefits. And what are some of those benefits? Meaning like, what are the most common health issues people use CBD for? A few Gruff Talk listeners specifically wanted to know about how CBD can help with their gastroenteritis issues, like Mm -hmm. constipation, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, and things like that. I had several questions pertaining to to that. Good. But I know there are so many. And, and in your book, you list quite a few. So kind of share with us. There are a lot. Probably the three top reasons that people use CBD are for pain, mm-hmm. for anxiety, and for insomnia. But GI issues are getting up there. Because I just gave a talk in Florida at today's dietitian symposium just about cannabis and CBD for gut health. Because it's an anti-inflammatory, that can be helpful to the gut. The anti-anxiety. So when people have IBS, anxiety plays a role in that. So if you're really stressed, those of us who have had IBS in the past, when you're really stressed, you might have a flare of your IBS. So if it can calm you, right? If it's neurocalming, decrease your anxiety, increase your serotonin levels, then that can indirectly help with things like IBS. With constipation, I can't tell you the number of people that I've had, clients that I've had who have found relief from constipation. And some I could say imagine me, it's because of a it's a relaxation right, thing for constipation right, in right. that case. Yes. I have a mother-daughter duo that that uses my water soluble CBD. And the daughter started it because she's got some benign liver tumor issues and anxiety and depression. So she started, then her mother started it for anxiety. Both of them have used Metamucil every single day of their lives. Mm -hmm. They just have genetic constipation. Both of them say they no longer need that now that they're taking CBD. That's incredible. Really, you know, a few weeks ago, I had on the show a really amazing young scientist who has his own lab out in uh, Washington State at Mm -hmm. the university there. And uh, his only focus is on the microbiome. And of course, we talked about that in great detail. (laughs) Great detail. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. (laughs) It got a little graphic too uh, at Uh some point. But I wish that I had had the wherewithal at, during that conversation to ask him, so, hey, doctor, what, what do you think about using uh, medicinal marijuana or, or cannabis? Absolutely. Uh, I didn't ask that question. I wish I had. But of course, a big part of his focus was on inflammation. So yes. what you're saying is that this really does help with inflammation. So ergo, I'm assuming mm. that he would say, yeah, you know, maybe it's, I'd like to know how open-minded he is about it. I yes. will ask him. Good, good. <laughs> so and, continue. What Anything else other than, well, sure, a lot of other things. What are some well, of the other symptoms? Well, there are other symptoms, but let me explain why this can be so helpful in addition to the anti-inflammatory and anti-anxiety and anti-spasmodic. We have, you and I, and every human and every animal has what's called the endocannabinoid system. So we have this system. It's a neuroregulatory system that influences every major organ system in our bodies. It was only discovered in the 1990s. So it's relatively new, but we have receptors from head to toe. And there are three main components. There are receptors. 
like I said, head to toe. So you might say, Janice, why would we have receptors for cannabinoids in a plant that only a certain percentage of people actually utilize? That doesn't make sense. Mm. And it doesn't until you realize that we make cannabinoids on our own. So I'm sitting here and I am making anandamide. It's called the bliss molecule, Sanskrit word for bliss. So I'm making anandamide and that's a feel good hormone, sort of like serotonin. Mm -hmm. You might be sitting there making anandamide, but you have an enzyme that breaks it down too quickly, which means that you are at higher risk of anxiety and depression because mm -hmm. you don't make enough. It's sort of like if someone doesn't make thyroid hormone, right? They go on thyroid medicine. Right. If you don't make enough anandamide, this bliss molecule, which is part of the whole endocannabinoid system whose goal is homeostasis. That's mm. what the endocannabinoid system is all about, balance and homeostasis in the body, which is why cannabinoid therapy can affect so many different areas of our body. You say, wait a minute, how can CBD help with constipation? It can also help people with diarrhea. It can help people with ALS. It can help people with Parkinson's, pain, depression. How can it really do all that? It's because of this endocannabinoid system that we have that if it is out of balance, and we introduce something like CBD that helps to balance out that system, it can affect multiple organ systems. How do you know if you're out of balance? How, is there a test or is it just uh, it becomes known to you if you have any of these symptoms? Or I think right now that's how we know. It's, okay. it, there is not a test. You can't go to your doctor and say, could you check my anandamide levels in my mm -hmm. blood? They can do that in a research lab so that they'll do that. The runner's high. You're probably familiar with that. You're an exerciser, yes. right? You go out for a run and you come back and you're like, woo, -hoo! endorphins, right? Yes. Yes. Guess what? They've done research, send people out. They measure their anandamide levels, send them for a run. They come back. Anandamide levels are sky high. Wow. So it might actually be the anandamide, this endocannabinoid that's giving us that, that runner's high. It's fascinating stuff. It's really fascinating. This is all very, very new to me. And clearly, this is something that more and more people are starting to focus on. Is that true? I mean, since you oh, yes. entered this field, oh, my goodness, yes. would you say that more people and researchers and and people like me, you know, the general public are more interested. Yeah, that's, that's really good. I mean, Clearly, I like, look, what's the downside? I mean, I'm sure it's not for everyone. I'm sure that if they're on medications, there might be, which we'll get to. But mm -hmm. I've seen also, you know, I also publish with a doctor, with an endocrinologist, I publish a newsletter for women before who are going, you know, journeying through menopause before, mm -hmm. during, and after menopause called Menopause Cheat Sheet. And we've reported a great deal in the last two years on all the research coming out of how more and more women are seeking CBD options for menopause yes. symptoms. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Yes. Well, interesting. There was a recent study in the journal Menopause, and they did a survey of 258 women, and 79% said that medical cannabis helped them with their menopause symptoms including mm -hmm. sleep and mood. Sleep so it's, and that was cannabis as a general. So some were using CBD, some were using medical cannabis. So yeah, it can definitely help with uh, menopause symptoms. And what I'm really excited about, because I, I use CBD, is its effect on bones. They did a study. Oh, now, this was a rat about study. That. You know, I have a great deal of interest in bone health, as oh, you yes. know, for yes. being on the as, board as of the Bone Health I. and Osteoporosis Foundation. Yes. Yes. And my mother fell and broke her hip mm. going on three years ago and passed yes. away last year. Her health spiraled downward after that. That's dramatic what fall happens. And, it's happened mm -hmm. with many people that I know and get mm -hmm. older and you fall that sort of like rent row. Now things tend to go downhill. But a particular study that I'm thinking about was a rat study and they had rats with broken femurs and they gave half the rats CBD and half the rats, they just had them healed the normal way. The rats who got the CBD healed twice as fast and the bones were stronger afterwards which I find mind-blowing. That is mind-blowing. Right? I mean, can I you must imagine? Tell you, I have not heard 
anything about this. And I feel like I'm really very connected to most current research having to do with bone health, considering my peers at the foundation and the like, but I've never heard this before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, we need to have everyone. I'm going to have a link. I'm going to have Janice send me the link to whatever mm-hmm. she has about this. Mm-hmm. And That's I'll make funny. sure I get it on my website so you can read up on it too, because I am intrigued by this. Wow. Yeah. I'm hopeful. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping yes, that my bones, you know, just get stronger and stronger. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in with CBD. Yeah, I'm all in. I'm all in with my running strength training and maybe CBD, which I have, I, you know, full disclosure, I have not yet tried. I was one of those I was one of those in school. It was like, no, I'm never going to take drugs. And I didn't. I, I, I'm not lying. I'm not like lying Same. about it. I didn't. And I did. I, of course, I tried pot. I went to college. I mean, sure. But I never liked it. It was not my thing. I just Same. didn't like it. So, yep. you know, the years go on. Here I am. It's just not something that I do. But now with all of this research and this new information that I'm getting from you today, and we still mm-hmm. have a lot more to cover. I'm really very intrigued by this. Yes. Really, I keep, really. I keep telling my husband Personally we need to intrigued. figure out. Yeah, same. I mean, we both use CBD. Most of the people in my family use CBD. But cannabis, you know, I just haven't. I tried it once in college when I was a senior. I called my mother. I was such a goody two-shoes. I'm like, Mom, I think I better try pot once before I leave college because I may never get the chance again. So again, I tried it once, didn't like it, and that was it. <laughs> yeah, that so was for me to be doing me. <laughs> for me to be doing what I'm doing now is absolutely hilarious to anyone Your who knows me. Your mother must be like still laughing about this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh so, man! All right, there've got to be some downsides to CBD. It can't be this perk. It sounds too perfect, like too good to be it true. Does so sound too good. Are, <laughs> are there side effects? To taking CBD, and if so, yeah. what like what are they the, like? The I'm things assuming that, too much, right, or wrong dose, right? Okay, so if you took a large dose of CBD and you were taking a drug like Coumadin or Warfarin, right, mm-hmm. it could mm-hmm. decrease or increase the amount of Warfarin in your blood, which is not good. So that that has a narrow therapeutic window. That particular drug. So mm-hmm. you need to be careful with that. Most of the doses that my clients are using. It's really not enough to affect that, but I'm still, I'm a dietitian. I'm ultra cautious. If someone is taking, I check all the medications that my clients take. And if they're taking something that there could be an interaction, I either separate them by two, they say a couple of hours. I always say three or four hours to be careful, just to be ultra cautious. So that's, that's one thing. But for side effects, some people find that they have more vivid dreams that they remember. They wake up in the morning and they say, oh, my gosh, I really totally remember that dream. CBD is a vasodilator. So it Mm -hmm. opens up your blood vessels, which is a good thing. We want more blood to go to our heart and our brain. If you have very, very low blood pressure and you take a massive, a big dose of CBD, you know, 100 or more milligrams, there's a potential that you could get lightheaded. Now, I have very low blood pressure. I was at a doctor, my annual recently, and I, it was 84 over 50 something. Wow, and they that said, is Whoa, low. But are you better okay? Low. And I said, I know, better low than high, of course. It's always but that's been low. low and mm-hmm. I take CBD. So it's never been a problem for me with low blood pressure. But I always want to make sure that I tell people that's, that's potential. The other thing, and this has only happened to a couple of people, they say when they first start taking CBD, their GI system feels a little bit wonky for a couple of days. And that's because we have all these receptors in our gut, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you're introducing something that's activating the receptors, which is a good thing. But a couple of people have said just the first few days, it's, it's a little bit, they feel a little bit off, but then it's fine. And the only other potential side effect that, that I'm aware of is, and this is also just the first few days, some people say, I felt a little bit fatigued. And Mm. that is sort of that, it's kind of your body exhaling. That's how I look at it because we're so used to, right? Functioning here, 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 we're we're going fast, we're doing so many things. And now Mm -hmm. you take CBD in that neuro calming effect, you think, oh, you know, I could take a nap. And that feeling doesn't last, it's just a few days and then your body adjusts to it and it's all good. Do people ever feel as a side effect that their brains are a little bit fuzzier? Never. 
Like that's never. In fact, it can help with focus. Oh no, that's not a Mm -hmm. thing at all. That Mm -hmm. is a thing if you take too much THC. Mm -hmm. That can affect your short-term memory. It can give you a little bit of a fuzzy brain. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. THC, you have to be careful of. Although I have to tell you that a small dose of THC really can be very medicinal. It can help with sleep. The Mm -hmm. problem is people go to a dispensary and they buy a chocolate bar and they eat a couple of squares and they become completely high and they never want to do it again. So someone in my yoga class brought a chocolate bar. She said, I went to a dispensary. They said this would be good for sleep. Each square was 20 milligrams of THC. Barbara, if you took 20 milligrams of THC, you'd sleep all right. And you probably wouldn't wake up for a while. So I said to her, no, (laughs) I tell people 2.5 milligrams. And if someone is really elderly, I might even go 1.5 milligrams, a tiny microdose of THC can be extraordinarily helpful. Yeah, for elderly, I mean, we were talking about falling, and I know your mom fell recently as well. So that's something we really want everyone to avoid doing, no matter what yes. your age. But yes, oh, that's that's really really interesting. I mean, I think people still get it confused. I know I do too. Oh, yes. you, you just assume if you're of taking course. CBD for all of these symptoms that you've been talking about, that you're going to have some of that pot stuck in there, and you're going to be nope. high and stoned. But um, nope. What are the most common ways to actually take CBD for, you know, with what you're working with? There are a few ways. One, you can use a tincture. Mm -hmm. I have a peppermint tincture and it's oil-based and you put it under your tongue and you hold it for at least 60 seconds. I tell people to take 10 slow, deep breaths when they hold it under their tongue and then you swish it around your mouth and you swallow it. That's absorbed in about 15 minutes. I also have a water-soluble tincture, and it's this nanotechnology that's really, really fast absorption. So it's absorbed within minutes. So people have very serious pain or like episodic pain, like all of a sudden they have a spasm or nausea that comes on very quickly, then that would be a better choice. I also have, uh, and there are soft gels. So that's what I do because it's just easy for me. I take it with my calcium and my multivitamin in the morning right? and it's a soft gel and you only need to dose it once a day, whereas a tincture, typically you dose twice a day. And then there are topical applications. Mm -hmm. So if let's say that you have tennis elbow or you play pickleball, which I happen to do, and your (laughs) knee gets sore afterwards. So sometimes after I play pickleball, I just use topical CBD on my knees. And it helps decrease the inflammation and decrease the pain. I don't know if you saw the article there in the New York Times just yesterday about pickleball, but not about pickleball itself. It was about all the injuries. Injuries. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. Somebody told me about that. Right? It was like a big thing. And mostly people who are 50 and older, you know. Of course. Who are, I mean, think about this a lot because I've played a few times, but, you know, I have to kind of save my knees, have a little arthritis in one knee, and I am Mm -hmm. training for the New York City Marathon, so I have to be careful. But, Mm. But all that stopping and going and stopping and going and then yeah. you know the tennis elbow and all of that so yeah oh, it sounds it like but it's it sounds like your products will really work <laughs> well yeah I mean, certainly certainly i use them and some of my fellow pickleballers uh use the cbd to help so okay we'll be right back after this short break we'll bust a few cannabis myths so stay tuned Okay, I'm back with my guest, Janice newell Bissex, chatting about CBD. Okay, Janice, we're going to play a little game, and I hope that our audience will play along with us. It's, it's a true or false game, not, not truth or dare like Madonna did, but, <laughs> <laughs> but true or false. Okay, to bust a few of those myths about CBD. And, uh, you know, I hope you're all listening and we'll shout out the answer before Janice does. <laughs> okay, let's go. If you take any kind of CBD for any symptom, you're going to get stoned. True or false? False. Yeah, I think we heard that already before, no, right? <laughs> can't get stoned, sorry. Can't get stoned with they CBD. They can't do it. No, <laughs> darn no, it. <laughs> no. However, let me tell you that it's not correct to say that CBD is not psychoactive. And you'll see that written everywhere. Oh, CBD is the non-psychoactive cannabinoid. It is psychoactive because it affects the brain. 
but it's calming versus intoxicating like THC is. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference. Okay. Number two, using medicinal cannabis will just make me feel tired. True or false? False. (laughs) Unless you consume massive quantities of (laughs) cannabis, then you will feel tired. That's what it sounds like. Some particular cultivars of cannabis are actually energizing. And there are terpenes, things called terpenes in the plant that give the plant its smell. And like pinene is a terpene that is energizing. So if someone has ADHD or low energy, they would choose a cannabis cultivar that had pinene because that could be more stimulating and energizing. But CBD at low doses is also energizing. So really? it, it will you not don't... make you... It won't make you tired or wiped out. That's good to know. Number three, currently, every state has the same laws about cannabis use. True or false? That's a big false. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, and we, we hit on that before. States, 38 states have a medical cannabis, medical cannabis laws, which makes it legal. And I believe it's 18 now. States allow for what they call recreational use. I call it adult use mm-hmm. because many adults go to this recreational store to help them sleep, to help manage anxiety. That's not really recreation. It's just adult use. And what I have a question for you. Mm. What segment of the population has seen the, the greatest increase in cannabis and CBD use over the past decade? Oh, I love this question. I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess people, you know, older people, pe- let's say people over 65. Yeah, it's either 60 I think it's either 60 or 50. I can't remember, but but it's it's people, it might be 60, people over 60. I mean, we're Mm -hmm. the ones that are looking for more of the Mm non-pharmaceutical ways to manage our conditions because, you know, the polypharmacy becomes a thing as we age. They give you something for your GERD, which causes this symptom. So then they give you something else for that, which causes this symptom. And then they, they give you... so. Yeah, Personally, that was my I'm mother. Trying, my mother was yeah. on so many medications, that's, and you're right. Happens. And each one caused yet another thing to happen to her, or how yes. make her feel in a certain way. And I regret that we did not have this conversation, you know, while my mother was still with us, because I think mm-hmm. she really would have been. She would have been very open to it. By the way, she was just that's a character great. and a lot of fun. Oh, I'd love that. And I think that she would have been quite open to trying other things for her aches and pains and other ailments. No question about it. But, oh, yeah. So that's that's amazing that this age group is, you know, open-minded. Mm-hmm. Of course. Of course. As, and, you know, listen, we are just so wonderful. <laughs> what can they we say? Are. We're just we're, like so fabulous. In, in Boston, and we are we open. we're wicked smart. <laughs> we're wicked smart. <laughs> Indeed. Number four. Medical marijuana can lead to addiction, true or false. So medical cannabis is not physically addictive in the same way that nicotine, alcohol, and some other drugs are. That said, some people do become dependent on it. And Mm -hmm. so maybe 9% of heavy long-term users. So we're not talking about people you know, in their 60s and 70s who are using it medicinally. This is people who really typically start younger Mm -hmm. and use it multiple times during the day, maybe not medicinally. Then about 9% develop what's called cannabis use disorder, which means that your use is affecting your relationships and your health and your your behavior. Mm -hmm. Have there been any studies that you're aware of pertaining to long-term use of the kind of CBD that we're talking about here? Like good, bad? I mean, is this something like, hey, if it's working for you, you should just keep on doing it because why not? Mm -hmm. Well, the World Health Organization says that it has a very good safety profile. But again, we've only had CBD products on the market for, I mean, I hadn't seen them until about six years ago. Maybe they were there longer, but it wasn't in my in my wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine that we found nothing thus far that right. would say that there would be an issue with long term use because you're just working with your own endocannabinoid system, mm-hmm. right? You're tweaking a system that you have in your own body. 
CBD enables this bliss molecule and this uh, another one is called 2AG. So anandamide and 2AG, it allows your body to retain these really good cannabinoids, endocannabinoids in our body. Mm-hmm. So I have not heard of any any long-term deleterious effects from CBD. I have a question too about what if I decided I wanted to try this? Mm-hmm. I personally have uh, the not uncommon degenerative disc disease. You know, I've got mm-hmm. some, it's not severe by any means, but I have that. I mean, and, and what if I don't have anything else, knock on wood, but what if I had something else that CBD could address and maybe even a third thing that CBD could, do you need to kind of, is like, does one tincture work for everything or does it depend yes. on the person? Like, how does, how does that work? Yeah, pretty much one product, one tincture or one soft gel, or if it's topical, see topical only works where you put it. Okay. So if you say, I have pain in my knee, great. Use a topical salve, put it on your knee. If Has you it been say, known to work for arthritis, by the way? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Now, right. Anything sorry. with <laughs> itis, anything with itis is inflammation, right? Mm-hmm. So absolutely it can work for arthritis. With arthritis, you I don't think I would only use the topical because you have inflammation internally with arthritis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you could put it on your knee and it will help. But I would also take it systemically so that you can quell the inflammation in your body. Right. But then you, I did interrupt you. I'm sorry. I do have a, a way of doing that. Maybe there's a tincture for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have something for that. <laughs> uh, okay. But I, I really want to segue into because uh, I'm very intrigued by all of this, all of this. And I also know that you use it, you know, you you cook with it in your book, which is so mm-hmm. great, so highly recommended. You talk about ways to, you know, add it to, to your food. But let's segue for a minute, talking about growing, growing your own weed, growing yeah. your own pot, Grow your growing own your, medicine. Right? your own sure. medicine in your backyard. How hard is it really? And do you recommend people to do this? Or is it best to leave it to the pros? I think it's a good idea to grow your own medicine. There's something really nice about putting a plant in the ground and watching it grow and then harvesting it. It's People say, oh, it grows like a weed. I can tell you the first year I did it, I had six plants, five ended up being males, which you have to get rid of because you don't want the males. You only want the females with beautiful buds. The males will drop their seeds and germinate the females, and then they won't produce. The, anyway, so you want a female plant. You can ah, buy feminized seeds. Okay. So you can buy seeds that are just females. So that's what I did this year. So I planted seeds in little cups. And because I failed miserably the first year, what I did was I said, I need to write a book, just a simple guide, a simple guide. So I wrote Simple Guide to Cannabis Gardening mm-hmm. for dummies like me who really don't know much about gardening. My husband does all the the flowers and all the vegetables. I just reap the rewards. (laughs) So, and I go through step-by-step. You take the seed, you put it in a paper towel, then you germinate it, you put it in a little cup, and then you put it in a little bigger pot, and then you put it in the yard. And then this is a something you can spray on it if you see bugs that's all natural with citronella oil and water. And so I did that. And so it's not that hard, but you have to plant, then you have to harvest it, yes. then you have to dry yes. each, all the branches, then you have to cure them. So you put them in mason jars, you cut off after you dry them, you trim them and you put the buds in mason jars, and then you have to cure them, which means every day you open the jar, and let them breathe for a few minutes, then you close the jar. So you do that for two or three weeks. And now you have buds that have been cured and are ready to use. So you can put it in a vaporizer. You can roll a joint. I wouldn't know how to do that, frankly, but some people know how to do that. So you can smoke it. (laughs) And, Uh you know, people say, oh, but I would never smoke it. And, you know, I sort of feel that way just because I cough when I try to smoke. Mm -hmm. But people who use cannabis long-term. The idea of it would be so horrible. I know. But long-term, no increased risk in lung cancer Mm -hmm. because the benefits of what's in the cannabis counteract any potential carcinogens. That's what we've found. Mm -hmm. It is a bronchodilator. So if you're having an asthma attack, the last thing you would think of doing is taking a puff of a joint, right? Mm -hmm. But guess what? It actually opens up your airways and provides relief to people. Isn't that crazy? That's incredible. That's incredible. I would have thought someone was, you know, 
smoking something if they told me that. <laughs> but it is true. It is true. I mean, I teach I teach cannabis therapy at John Patrick University. So I have to do all the research and make sure that it's evidence based and really and the more I read, the more I'm just it's sort of mind blowing what you learn when you really dig deep. There's people who smoke cannabis long term have a fraction of the incidence of diabetes. How Incredible. How is that even possible? Yeah. NHANES, wow. you know, the NHANES study, that National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. Yes. And they do big, a survey every five or 10 years. Mm -hmm. Huge Ongoing. longitudinal study. Mm -hmm. And they found that people who use cannabis have, I think it's a 17% improved um, glucose tolerance, um, mm -hmm. less insulin resist. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's really- and that's a huge reason why women who go through menopause, in fact, we, with Dr. Margaret Noctegal, my partner in, in the Menopause Cheat Sheet newsletter, we had an episode not that long ago talking about how to lose belly fat. And the big focus was exactly on that, on the sensitivity and the glucose. And, right. and this, I mean, it's like a magic, we always say there's no magic bullet, but it sounds like CBD <laughs> is CBD. a little bit of a magic bullet for a lot of things that ail a yes. lot of people and I with really no downside. Right. And I refrain from saying that, but keep my clients email me and they use the word magic. And I say, I can never use that word because that really sounds like a snake oil salesperson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. And, and honestly, never in a million years as a dietitian, if you had told me you're going to sell a supplement, I would say there's no way. I, that's not what I do. But the FDA did a study and found that 70% of the CBD products on the market are mislabeled. Some have zero CBD because it's expensive to grow it and harvest it and dry it and cure it and extract it and make a product. It's, it's expensive. You know, you're going to yes. pay 70, 100, $120 for a good quality product. So people were putting olive oil in little bottles oh and my selling gosh. it. I'm not you know, surprised. It's just so- It's so awful, thought, but not surprised. So I found a company that grew organically and was all, you know, good manufacturing process in Colorado. So I said, I want to recommend that my clients buy your product. Where can they do that? And they said, oh, we don't sell retail. We only do wholesale. You have to buy it. And I thought, there is no way I'm doing that. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought I have to, if I want to know. So if, if you take my CBD and in, in a month you say to me, you know what, Janice, I'm not really seeing relief. I know it's not because you bought a lousy product. So what we'll do is we'll tweak the dosing, we'll tweak the administration method. Some people, certain percentage of people don't have the enzyme in their liver to process, to metabolize orally taken CBD or cannabis. So if you wow. somebody could take an edible of 20 milligrams of CBD and have zero effect because they're lacking that enzyme. Now, don't test that, people that are listening. Do not test that with 20 milligrams of THC. <laughs> but some people can't metabolize oral CBD or and THC. And how do you know that? You don't when know that. You don't know. You just know by by just taking it and seeing what the results are, how you're feeling, yes. if it's working. Yes. And tweaking and, and redosing. And okay. Right. Okay. Right. That Which makes is sense. why a tincture, so when people are starting, typically I'll say, let's try a tincture first mm -hmm. because- that's a more direct delivery system and mm -hmm. you can titrate it. So I start people on a tiny, tiny dose. I don't want them to use a dropper of tincture if they can get relief with a quarter dropper. Mm -hmm. So we start very low and then we increase if we need to. If someone says, you know what, a quarter dropper twice a day, my anxiety, it's taking the edge off my anxiety, my gut seems healthier, I can sleep better. That's it, you don't have to increase. That's incredible. I, I'm telling you right now, and I think anyone who's listening will hear this too. I've just made a decision as we've been talking. I have been really battling this knee, you know, mildly arthritic knee. Mm -hmm. And I am training for the marathon, as I said. So it's really a problem sometimes. And oh, I have yes. hip tendinosis. And, you know, luckily I don't have any of those other symptoms that we've been talking about. Again, knock on wood for that. Mm -hmm. But I am going to try this. I Absolutely. am going to try this and I'm going to report back. <laughs> and so I would say the water-soluble CBD mm -hmm. 
when you put the drops in a little bit of water and you drink it, this that one particular product doesn't taste very good. I always warn people. Mm -hmm. I've only had one person out of about a thousand using that product that said she gets migraines and gets nausea. She said, Janice, I can't, I can't drink that. It's got a little bit of a bitter flavor to it. Oh, I that's use it. Okay. I use my soft gel and I use that if I tweak my back at yoga or if I whatever. I yep. twisted my ankle the other day going to pickleball, not even playing pickleball, walking Just out of going there. To go to pickleball. <laughs> yeah, Does that count as a pickleball done that. injury? <laughs> <laughs> so I yeah. use some of it then too. And with that, I usually say to people, start with five drops in a little bit of water a couple of mm. times a day. Mm -hmm. But if you go for a long run, so you're out doing, you know, 20 miles yeah. to train. I did now 10 you're today. Use more. Getting up now in the miles. Now you're going to use more. Yeah. yeah. Then you could, and, and not only does it help with the pain, but it quells the inflammation. So it's promoting healing. Mm -hmm. It's not masking it. It's helping your body, your tissues heal. So mm -hmm. you're a perfect candidate. I am going to try it. I love, you know, I love talking about all of these things and learning something new, especially how it will help me feel better. In some cases, look better, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I hopefully age better. I mean, that really is our goal <laughs> with this show is to talk yes. about all these things that will help us kind of feel better and age better, right? right. And I would love to try it because like I said, I, you know, I'm sometimes uncomfortable. And if mm -hmm. there's something out there that would help me be more comfortable, of course, right. I'm going to try it. And I'm Without going to try it. <laughs> NSAIDs that, you know, can yeah, damage your yeah, kidneys and absolutely. cause, you know, and the Tylenol with the liver. That's the mm -hmm. beauty of this is mm -hmm. that it doesn't have those unwanted potential side effects. Mm -hmm. So if any of we'll your, talk, your listeners yeah, want, we'll absolutely. Talk. But I do have, you know, when COVID started, I, I did a promo code on my website, CALM, C-A-L-M just to give people 15% off because a lot more people needed CBD for the last two and a half years. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I said, okay, when COVID is sort of winding down, I'll remove that promo code. And it's like, I, I just keep it up there because we're still, That's we're great. still dealing with this. So, so people listening. That, so you know what? Tell us your website. How can people find you and find the products? Okay. The website is Janibus Wellness. So it's cannabis with a J. So Jan, <laughs> I love Jan, it. I'm Janice. Cannabis <laughs> Janice was my first uh, little business name for about a month. And then someone said, OK, that's a little bit whatever. So we, we combine them. So it's JanibusWellness.com. And you can go on there. There I have a lot of research. If people are interested, they say, oh, I know someone with Parkinson's. OK, here are 10 studies mm -hmm. showing how CBD and cannabis can be used for Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. So look at the resources there. Oh, your, your website is amazing and your books Thank are you. amazing, too. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. A lot yeah. of and information, the book, the everyone. On there. Her. Yep. A lot of information. The products there. So, yeah, the code is CALM, C-A-L-M. And if you sign up for specials, the only email I send is when I have a sale. Every once in a while, I'll do a buy two, get one free sale. But for the most part, I've got 15% off for people who, who sign up or know the code. It's, it's calm again. Just it's calm. Great. And I will make sure I include that in the show notes and also on my website, because I always do a blog about each episode. And then I mm -hmm. add in any other information that maybe we didn't have during the show. I will add all of that. And thank you. That's, that's really great. Sure. And uh, yeah, and me too. <laughs> I'm going to use it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so before we let you go, and I, I want to have you come back because I want to share with you how I'm feeling and how I'm doing, you know? That would be excellent. Yeah, I think that'd I be really, that. really fun, like a follow-up chat. Sure. But give us a like three key takeaways from today's chat. You really, really, really want people to remember about the show. You know, I think I want everyone to know that CBD and cannabis can help a lot of people. It doesn't help everyone. It can help a lot of people for a lot of different conditions. When you're looking for a CBD product, do your due diligence. Look for organically grown. Look for anytime you buy a CBD product, ask for a certificate of analysis. It's called a COA. And that means that the company has sent this product for independent lab testing to prove that what's on the label is actually in the bottle. Mm -hmm. So I do that for all my products. And if someone says they don't have that, then do not buy the product. I also think it's good to buy from a company where there's a person who can answer questions and help you with dosing because it, mm -hmm. it is a little bit confusing. I had a woman call me once and, you know, I had said hello and she said, is this Janice? I said, yes. Yeah. She said, really? I said, yes. 
I said, why? <laughs> Who did you expect? She said, when I call Victoria's Secret, I don't expect Victoria to answer the phone. <laughs> I said, oh, honey, I'm, this, I'm a small business. I'm not Victoria, Victoria's Secret size business. I, I just love that. Oh. I love that. Um, but one thing that I that I say to people that I'll end with is that until you or someone you love finds relief using CBD or cannabis, you will not understand. You won't understand. You can't understand mm -hmm. how effective it can be until you see it. Until I saw it with my dad, I didn't even believe in it. Never mind, you know, didn't believe in it. And until I saw that, I just, you can't understand it until until that happens to someone you love or, or to yourself. Yeah, well, thank you, Janice, so much for joining me today. This was incredible. I learned so much and I'm really excited about Good. trying this. Excellent. Yeah, Excellent. It's, yeah I'm it's really excited about it. It's I'll a come lot back of fun. anytime. You will be back. <laughs> thank you again for joining us, Janice. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode of Rough Talk, please do two things. First, share it with all your friends and family and subscribe to Rough Talk wherever you listen to podcasts, including YouTube, so you never miss a single episode. Until next time, remember this. We can't control getting older, but we can control how we do it. Talk to you soon. Age Better Podcast is a proud member of the Sound Advice Network. Sound Advice, women's voices amplified.